Ah, this is Brooklyn. St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Today, ladies and gentlemen, super pumped. But before we jump into it, I wanna thank you guys for liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I absolutely appreciate it. All the love you guys have been uh, showing, absolutely appreciate it. So today, ladies and gentlemen, what we're gonna be jumping into, we're gonna be talking a little bit about um, the quarantine tank and quarantine phase in the aquaponics system. Um, and this question comes from one of my students in Aquaponics Paradise who's going through the Aquaponics Guide course. So he wants to know a little bit about the quarantine phase. So we're gonna jump into this question right the heck now. So let's get right into it. This question comes from Jonas. What's going on, Jonas? It says, I'm doing the aquaponic, or I'm doing the God course. And a couple questions pops up along the way. Chapter, this is fish and plant production. It says, how do you set up the system for the quarantine tank? Is it a separate system not connected to the rest due to the risk of infection, right? So Jonas, to answer your question, well, for some of you guys out there, before we jump into it, the quarantine phase um, is very important when you're dealing with fish. And you're gonna be using the quarantine phase primarily for, uh, for two main reasons. One of the reasons that you're gonna be using it is if you have fish, like in your main production area, the main fish tanks that you use to grow out your fish, if you find that there's fish in there that have become diseased, you're gonna to wanna to remove those fish out of there before the infection spreads further. So you'll check for them, then you'll remove them out. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is take them into a quarantine area to where you can examine them, find out what's going on, um, what disease is, um, is occurring, and then find out if you're gonna treat it or not, right? So that's one reason why you're gonna be using a quarantine phase. The second reason that you're gonna be using it is when you have new fish come in. You got your new fingerlings come in, you're happy, you're dancing around, shaking, doing all types of madness because you're excited that you got your fish coming in. You got your fingerlings coming in from a different hatchery and they come in, you're gonna wanna separate those from your main production system. You're gonna wanna have them excluded and, and off into their own area so you can monitor them and find out if there's any underlying disease that those uh, fingerlings have because you don't know what they have, what they've come with from the hatchery that they've just arrived from. So those are the two reasons why you're gonna wanna break out, you know, you're gonna wanna have a quarantine phase um, in your production cycle. Now, as far as how to set it up, you're definitely gonna wanna have your quarantine area completely separated from your main uh, production area, which means that you're gonna wanna have a separate water source. You're not gonna wanna be sharing the water source with your main production area in your quarantine phase. You're gonna wanna have to, you wanna keep that totally separate. Also, the testing instruments that you're gonna be using, your, your, you know, your nets, um, any of your meters, you're gonna wanna have those exclusive to the quarantine area. And just as you mentioned in here, Jonas, it is right because you don't wanna infect or cause any other infections to happen on your main production area. If you're messing around with fish that are infected, you don't wanna be using those, uh, or you don't wanna have that water or the instruments be in contact with your main production area to further any uh, type of infection. So you wanna help um, eliminate that by separating you know, those two phases. And ideally you wanna have the quarantine in a separate, totally separate building. Ideally, it's not always feasible in every circumstance, depending on, you know, if it's a small system that you have, you, you know, you might, it might not be worth it to have a totally separate building. But if you're, you know, high in, you know, in the production um, um, uh, area, and you're producing a lot of fish for consumption, and it's a very important part of your production, then you're definitely gonna wanna, gonna wanna look into something like that, having it totally separate from everything else, just because you don't wanna even take the risk of introducing any type of disease back into your main production area, because that will um, hinder the production um, in your main area. So we gotta keep that into consideration. So keeping them separate, that's what's gonna help you uh, alleviate any of those problems, all right? So let's see what else you got in here. It says, but how do you run it? Do you use a small separate aquaponic system or do you have some other setup 
on the tank, whether it be just like a, you know, a regular recirculating aquaculture system with, a, with fish only, it could be just like a regular um, fish tank. You know, it just depends. That's relative to, you know, how big of an operation you have or how small, how small it is, you know? So that's pretty much how it is. There's nothing super fancy about it. It's just set up and it's just separate. That's pretty much what it is. Now, how you really want to try to aim to set it up is you want to try to mimic the uh, water conditions or the conditions that you have in your main production area. So if you have a high, relatively high stocking density in your main production area, half pound per gallon, you want to try to your best to mimic that in the quarantine area. Also, the water temperature is important as well. Um, you want to try to aim to have that on the upper end of the optimal uh, water temperature um, requirement for the fish. And what that's going to do is when you have it on the upper end, it's going to help the, any of those underlying diseases that the fish might have. It's going to help pull those out right on that higher end of the water quality uh, or the water temperature uh, spectrum. Um, also lower dissolve oxygen. That's going to stress the fish out. It's going to help pull up some of those underlying disease that you might not catch if you have them, you know, in a relatively uh, stressless, um, you know, uh, water environment. So that's some, some of the things that you're going to want to consider when you're setting it up. But other than that, it's pretty much the same as a fishless recirculating uh, system. Now, you can set it up as an aquaponic system, but that's something that you're going to want to take you know, you're going to really want to look into. I would advise not to in that circumstance. And the reason is because when your, 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 your quarantine phase is relatively fast, the cycle is relatively fast. We're talking about 30 to 45 days, you know, to get them in there, monitor them, check them out, see if there's anything going on before you move them on to the next phase. So after that phase is over with, what you're going to do is you're going to disinfect the entire system. Right, you're gonna get it in and disinfect everything. So if you have an aquaponic system added to it, you're gonna have to disinfect that as well. So you really only have a window of about 30 to 45 days to grow anything before you have to disinfect the entire thing, dump out all the water, all of it's gone, and then start all the way over again. So it's not really that conducive to an aquaponic system. Aquaponic system is relying more on the longevity of keeping that water in there. That's really where you're tapping into the main benefits of, you know, an, aqua, an aquaponic system. So you're getting rid of all of that. You're disinfecting it. And it's more labor that's going to be involved in it. So that's something that you have to consider. Also, if it's indoors, which a lot of times it's going to be, then you have to invest in grow lights to grow your plants. Um, and that's something that's a recurring cost that you have to consider. Also, if you do have a disease that pops up, some of the chemicals that you're going to be using, those are not going to be um, um, allow the plants to be uh, to be consumed by humans. Right. So those plants are going to take up the plant roots are going to take up those chemicals that you're using to treat the fish. And that's going to get inside the, uh, the plant leaf, the tissue. And that's not going to be something that you're going to want to be consuming. So these are some of the factors that you have to consider when putting it together, uh, you know, as far as doing it as an aquaponic setup. So I would advise not doing it that way. Although you can figure out a way to wiggle in there, it's probably not worth the time. At least from my perspective, it wouldn't be worth the time. All right, Jonas. So I hope that has helped you out. And anyone else that, out there that has, you know, has a question that's similar to that, or maybe, you know, thinking about something that's similar to that. Hopefully that has helped you out and that you've got something out of it. So, would anyone else out there, if you guys have any other questions, leave them in the comment section below. You know, I love taking you guys' questions. It helps out a lot of other people that may have the same questions and may not know where to get the answer from. So continue asking questions. If you guys need more help, click on the link below. You got the aquaponic starter guide, a free aquaponic course. Enroll in the School of Aquaponics, the schoolofaquaponics.com. Um, we got paid courses there. Um, aquaponics paradise. You can jump in there, learn the fundamentals of aquaponics and get growing. It's going to help you out tremendously, right? So with that being said, thanks again, Jonas, for asking the question. You got another part that I'll be ans uh, answering coming up soon. So I'll be jumping, uh, putting you ahead of everyone else. And I'll be answering that part of the question as well. So with that being said, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the school of aquaponics reminding you to stop walking 
and get you a car.